Greetings, traveler. Alrighty, guys. So, as I mentioned, a lot of this is going to be the first time looking at the card. I always like to do this where I save up everything. So you guys get my initial reaction to everything, which creates some pretty funny situations. Sometimes be like, this card is so damn broken. Oh, that's not how it works? Yeah, it's probably not that good then. <laughs> or, wow, this card isn't really that good. Oh, oh, never mind. Yeah, it's, it's quite good. So let's go. Spell Zerker. All right, so I mean, this is a river croc with upside. That's by default good. I don't think there's much, like my reviews also aren't, I, I'm not going to go on for an insanely long time because there are probably enough cards where we can talk stuff about. This is a pretty straightforward card where it's uh, it's like a Tuscar Fisherman type thing where it's harder to activate, but sometimes it's gonna wreck you because it's too, right? Bad? How is this bad? This is a fucking river croc. River croc by definition is good, right? How can you look at this card and say it is bad? Any type of Bloodfen Raptor slash River Croc with upside is by definition good. All right, let's a go. Yeah, you can ping it with uh, you can ping it with the hero power. All right, next one, Shield Breaker, two mana, two one, silence an enemy minion with taunt. So at first glance, it's not necessarily worth the penalty in stats, but probably in certain decks it's okay. Like if you have a pretty aggressive deck, like in Hunter and stuff. In general, I don't think we'll be picking this up super highly. Uh, Serpent Ward. At the end of your turn, deal two damage to the enemy hero. Uh, neutral Totem. Interesting. Two mana for an O2. Probably not so good. Uh, I think in the, in, in the aggressive decks, I definitely want to give this a shot. But I think in most decks, not quite. I think your, your deck needs to have a sp specific purpose, right? So... Scarab Egg, uh, Death Rattle Summon 3 one, one Scarab. So we can compare this to the old Nerubian Egg, right? Nerubian Egg was an 0-2, Summon a 4-4, and it was quite good if you had any synergy for it. This is Summon 3 one ones. So if you have it in Druid and you have Power of the Wild and Savage Roar and all those things, it's definitely playable. But I think like all eggs, it's one of those, you either have the deck for it or you don't. Uh, so really depends on the kind of deck you have. In most decks, it's probably not going to be that good. Because even for late game AoE protection, getting three one ones is like whoop de fucking do, right? So uh, at least with the with the five five, you have a you have a threat in the late game. Against the mage, three one ones, he probably doesn't care. But yeah, for for buff classes, pretty nice. Alright. <clears throat> four mana for a three two. Death rattle, summon a three two. So we have the Paladin four drop which is a 5-2, and that summons a 2-2 when it dies. And it's like, eh, you'll, you'll kind of take it. This is a 3-2 at the start, but it does go off also on your turn. That's important, right? Because the other one... Wait, does the Paladin one go off only in your turn? I actually can't remember. I think so, right? It's like the... It's like the Vrygul expansion. Um, Frozen Throne. So here you don't have that limitation. Did it start early? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you haven't missed anything really. We were just talking about how a neutral River Croc, well, neutral River Croc is neutral. How a River Croc with spell power is pretty good. Other than that, you haven't really missed anything. Um, so I wouldn't say it's insane. Now, if you have the uh, the five one, the four mana five one, miss me, All right? That guy. That's pretty. That's pretty relevant. With the five power you can't ping this off but no I, I don't think we like this but you'll pick it sometimes because it's a thing to play on curve all right so first thing we always look at is stats so four mana three five by definition is playable at the start of your turn restore to health of this minion wow okay this looks super solid in arena extremely annoying five hp is hard to one shot so this is probably going to be able to deal three damage twice. And then, you know, you put it in priest, you give it a little bit of extra health, right? You put it behind a taunt. Yeah, this this definitely seems like um, a card we'll see a lot uh, being drafted in arena. This this will this will probably be quite frustrating when you when you're just short of killing it every time and just keeps keeps doing stuff. Uh, so once again, it's a four mana three five. By definition playable 
If you control a frozen minion, gain 8 armor. Eh. Probably not so relevant for Arena, but once again, 4 mana 3 5. You can put that in your deck without feeling terrible. 1 mana 1 1. Death Row reduces the cost of a beast in your hand by 1. It's not for Arena. Although it's probably the tiny fin of the set, right? Okay, but yeah, not uh, not relevant in Arena. At the start of your turn, destroy this and gain 8 armor. Not relevant in Arena. Former Champ, Battlecry Summon a 5 5 Hotshot. Okay, so this one I have seen a comment about where it seems super strong because 5 mana for a 5 5, uh, you'll take that. That's fair. That's a good stat distribution. You get an extra 1 1 and you get to play around runes, you get to play around entity and all those things. But overkill is a keyword in the set. So putting a 1 1 down on turn 5 might be something you can't really do because the opponent has an overkill minion on the board. So I would say that given the particular set, especially if there is going to be a set bonus, this might be a liability that you have to develop the 1-1 one, one body as well. Sometimes you would rather just play the 5-5 five, five because the opponent has an overkill minion. So we'll need to see how often that interaction happens. But if you disregard overkill, it's a very strong card. Uh, but with overkill being a mechanic, it might be awkward. Like, you'll want to play it, but you're like, well, if I play it now, I give him a 5-5 five, five for free. So, All right, 3 mana, 3-4. Three, that is a spider tank. That is, by definition, a really good body. Uh, Battle Cry, give each player a copy of a random card from their opponent's deck. Oh, boy. So this feels Spell Slinger, right? Where you'll take it because you need the curve and because it's a good body. But you'll be like... Uh, don't win him the game, please. So, feels like Spell Slinger. You'll take it, but if you can take a Pixie over this, you probably would. Because you don't want to give him the the chance of getting a, a card that would be really annoying for you. <clears throat> XR said there will be no set bonus. Ah, okay. Uh, Dozing Marksman has plus 4 attack while damaged, an 0-4, um, not that relevant for Arena, probably in a certain Shaman deck with Flame Tongues and all that, but eh, for most of it, not quite. Alright, 2 mana 3-3, three, three, give your opponent a coin. So, we've seen Hoarding Dragon, and even without Dragon Slayer, it's not amazing so giving your opponent a coin just to get a 3-3 out for two is probably not worth it, it also depends on how fast the meta is um, the faster the meta is kind of the less it's relevant I feel in the slow meta giving your opponent coins is really nasty but in faster meta people kind of burn through the cards fast enough anyway but yeah I don't think we like this 3 mana 2-2, two, two, add 2 bananas to your hand. Feels like it's a bit too slow, a bit too awkward. I'll probably pick it just to see how it feels, but doesn't feel like it'll be good. Why? Okay, no. Don't like it at all. Overkill, summon another arena patron. <laughs> so, old Grim patron, you would take and hope it would work. So, I don't see this thing working. If you have, uh, if you had Old Grim Patron, you were going like, oh, please let it work, right? But Old Grim Patron was much easier to trigger. This is quite hard to trigger, so don't like it. 4 mana 2 3. Battle Grey, give all minions in your hand plus 1 plus 1. Okay, so we used to have Grime Street, which was 2 mana 1 1. This is a 4 mana 2 3. Mm, I don't think so. I think it's a tiny bit too slow. Like, you you can only play it on turn 3 at the earliest. You've already played some minions before that. It's hard to combo. I don't think we like it. It's a battle cry, right? Yeah, okay. Hello! Okay. This seems insane. So at 5 mana 3-6, the body is slightly understated, but not by 
any uh, any big margin. And it's a neutral AoE effect. Whew. Okay, so this is this is probably gonna change the uh, this is gonna change the way how we play arena because right now one one token spam is quite common. Uh, this is uh, this is gonna help deal with violet worms, and it's going to really really incentivize you to trade off your one HP minions. But it's a dragon. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. Man, I really hope that Blizzard just stops printing like these stupid hate cards, man. Ah, it's so dumb for Arena. All right, not gonna rant too much on that. You guys know my stance on it. But yeah, apart from the fact that it's a dragon, it looks really good for sure. Maybe there's even some dragon synergy in the set for later on and it becomes pretty good. But yeah, next one. Okay, so eight mana. What are other eight mana taunts that you usually play? Just to compare. Mm. I don't think I like this over Iron Bark at all. Lich King. Yeah, Lich King is your standard eight mana taunt, huh? I don't really like it. I don't know. For one mana more, you have a Sleepy Dragon. This can get Paint, Cabald, Shadow Madness, Moss Seed. And for one mana more, you have a Sleepy Dragon. And Sleepy isn't even premium or anything, right? But Sleepy deals uh, sleepy deals four damage. And that's such a huge difference. I mean, you'll probably sometimes pick this card just because you need a big card. But just imagine your opponent has an 8-8 and just hits it twice. His 8-8 or even a Violet Worm, right? Let's say he pings the shield and hits it twice with the Worm. The worm still has three health left, and your guy is dead. No, I don't. Uh, I don't really like it. Once again, four mana, three five. By definition, playable. Stealth makes it better, and we have some upside. That makes for a very solid arena card. Not quite as good, I think, as the regenerator, but super solid arena card, for sure. Lots of three fives, right? So keep in mind that with lots of new 3.5s, 5.4s and 5.5s become quite good. So think of Steam Surger, think of Banshee. Those four drops are going to really go up if 3.5s uh, become the norm because they can just chunk them and the Banshee can't even get pinged off after that. Oh, okay. Cheeky Ankle Biter, 2 minute 2, 1, Battle Cry deal 1 damage and it has Lifesteal. So if the meta is close to what it is right now, and it's fairly fast, having a cheap card that provides a body and pings is pretty good. But as we've already seen with this one, the Scorcher, it's going to be less, you know, it's gonna be harder to create a really wide board and buff. But yeah, this looks pretty good, honestly. Because we, we used to have the 2-1 the Murloc that pinged for one, and we would pick that. It's a bit meta dependent. The slower the meta becomes, the worse cards like these become. The faster the meta is, the better cards like this become. So, so in, in current meta, this would be pretty good. <laughs> so that's probably the first 3-5 where we go like, no thank you. Especially, well, I guess it's a 3-drop, right? But obviously, if it was a 4-drop, obviously, right? But as a 3-drop, no. Once again, maybe in a really slow meta, right? Where you don't really care too much about your health. I don't think we like this because Pit Lord is a four drop and it's a five, six, and we're not like too happy about Calm it. Down, I'm a doctor. Hey, Chernobyl, thank you for the two months in a row. Welcome back, welcome back. <clears throat> no, I don't, I don't love, I'm not in love with this card. Maybe I'm wrong about it, but it doesn't look too good. All right, so legendary, so by default, not too impactful. This will this will probably create for some crazy stuff at the end of the game, but I mean, you put your opponent back to six mana, right? Because he it's his turn. This feels like more a constructed reply to Druid. So, yeah, I don't think it's too relevant for Arena. Yeah, Doctor Stein. So in Priest, for instance, this is probably kind of okay because you can heal. In Warrior, this is probably kind of okay. So. Uh, whenever an adjacent minion takes damage, this minion takes it instead. Huh. 
How does that work? Five mana, three, eight. So the stats are all right, for sure. The problem is, if you have a 1-1 one, one next to this, they just attack the 1-1 one, one and this minion takes the damage. Sir, once again, it's, it's pretty deck dependent, I guess, and pretty board dependent. It doesn't feel like I would like this card. Really depends on the board state. Oh, it works when I attack. Oh, okay. Huh. Now that is way different. So, okay, so painting a picture, right? Our opponent has a 4-4 on the board. We have a bubble ease. Turn 5, we play the Shell Fighter. We trade 4-4 four, four into 4-4. Four, four. We keep a 3-4 and a 4-4. Four, four. Okay, the fact that you can decide when you play it and when you use the effect first completely changes the dynamic. Yeah, that probably becomes pretty darn relevant. I like it. I actually like it. Because you play it when you're about to trade. That's pretty cool. Man, this is going to create for some funny board states then. Okay. So many shit cards. Relax, dude. What, what do you mean so many shit cards? We've actually seen the majority of the cards have actually been above average. We've seen some really, really solid arena cards. Here's another one, right? This is actually really powerful. Five mana for a six five. That's overstated. So you expect you expect this to have um, a downside because it's overstated, but it has an upside because <clears throat> the opponent can't uh, the opponent can't decide whether he wants to kill this or not for sure. This is quite a good card. He just attacks this minion. Yeah, but it's what I said, Nodger. You play it when you're about to attack, right? You play this when you're about to attack, right? Okay. The Undertaker. So once again, legendary, so not too relevant for Arena. This this looks like it's just, once again, one of those cards. You either have the deck for it or you don't. A little bit like um, the Priest one, right? The, the Coffin Crasher, right? Extremely, extremely good if you have the death rattles. Pretty bad if you don't have the death rattles. So, completely dependent on what your deck looks like. Wow, wow. Okay, feels pretty good, man. Playing. Uh... Hmm. Excuse me. People are gonna have to trade everything in here, huh? You can you can treat this having soft taunt, sort of. Because you will play this, and your opponent will trade the small shit in here, unless you're on low HP. Like, you play this, and they have, like, a 3-2, and instead of pushing the 3-2 face, they will have to sack the 3-2 in this, because they don't want you to get a 10-7. A Man, that's nice. That's really nice. 5 mana, 3-4. Rush. Overkill, summon 2 one, one bats. Okay, so... We compare this to the Paladin Charger, which has Divine Shield, but this one summons two 1-1 one, one bats. If the bats would have Rush as well, that'd be crazy, man. <laughs> the kind of shit you could do with Flame Tongues and all that. It still seems pretty good, this. Just anything that gives you initiative. Man, just having low power things on board is going to be such a hassle. Damn. Okay. Gonna really, really have to look at what they could potentially have for overkill. In the best case scenario, you get five, six stats. No, 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 no. In the best case scenario, this, this goes off three times. <laughs> you can't just say best case scenario, right? Uh, in the average scenario, you will get the one ones out. Cosmin, I said hi. <laughs> I read it. Thank you, Cosmin. Welcome back, man. Thank you for that. All right, so seven mana, seven, four. Those are pretty bad stats. Battle cry, if you're holding a dragon, deals seven to an enemy minion. So can't go face, that's important. So blaze color is a six, six, but the condition is different. Blaze color, you need to have an elemental played. This one, you just need the dragon in your hand. So you can keep this in your hand the entire time. 
until you have uh, you can keep this in your hand the entire time until you draw your dragon so in a deck with lots of dragons like the three six earlier it's obviously good because you know seven mana to essentially kill something and put a seven board on the board put a seven four on the board is good so a la blaze caller this is really powerful if you have it and pretty bad if you don't so yeah another another just very deck dependent card Grifta, it's a yeti discover two cards give one opponent at random yeah kind of similar as we saw earlier with the spider tank that gives your opponent a card you'd prefer a yeti but hey mm, so zombie chow but not quite <laughs> So the cool thing with this is that you can give your opponent an overkill target. That's something to think about. One, they can't preemptively trade off. So in a deck with lots of overkill cards, this seems pretty dirty because you play it and the opponent's like, all right, I get a zero three. And then you're like, okay, I play my overkill card. And they're like, Ugh, what the fuck that's annoying so yeah if you have lots of overkill in your deck it seems pretty fun you get information while you they also get information right Cosman and you give them random shit it's not good man you'd, you'd rather have a regular spider tank all right masked contender if you control a secret play a secret from your deck Oh, you know, most of the time, not good, right? But once again, in certain decks, it's going to pop off. Not quite Kirin Tor level, because Kirin Tor, you just need one secret in your hand. Here, you already need to have the secret on board, and it's a 2-4 instead of a 4-3, so not so good. Both cards are from your opponent deck? I don't think so. All right, next one. Soup Fender. Whenever you restore three or more health to your hero, draw a card. Two mana, one four. So two mana, one four, that's Dalaran Mage thing, right? Or whatever it is, the, the one four stat line. No, the the Shifter, right? The Shifter is a one four. And you can play that, but it has spell power. I suppose that in some niche cases where you have some bubblies or whatever, it, it can do work, but once again, most of the time, it's not really going to go off. Maybe with certain cards in the deck. Yeah. Maybe with certain cards in the deck could be good. All right. <clears throat> Rabble Bouncer. 7 mana, 2, 7. Taunt costs 1 less for each enemy minion. So in MSG, we used to have the 4, 5, which would cost 3 if the opponent would have three minions, right? So let's say the opponent has three minions. You have a four mana, two, seven. Blah. Doesn't feel spicy enough. Ho, ho, ho. Amani Warbear, seven mana, five, seven, with Taunt and Rush. So good card to begin with, right? We have Taunt, we have Rush. Not quite as good, I think, as the 510 overkill, but that's uh, that's kind of a bomb, right? Yep, initiative is always nice. Fire Tree Witch Doctor. If you're holding a dragon, discover a spell. Yeah. Like with all the dragon cards, probably not that good. Only if you have the deck for it. Looks like in constructed, it could be pretty pretty nasty. The dragon decks. All right, this. Yeah, I mean, for Arena, you're, it's not like you have much control over it, right? So it's like whatever in Arena, I guess, this one. Yeah, the War Bear is going to go in a lot of 3-5s for sure. Untamed Beastmaster. Ooh, wow, this is insane. It's a spider tank, so by default it's good, assuming it doesn't have a negative effect. And then, yeah. what does the Corrupted Blood do? It does, like damage and then you shuffle more in your deck so it's like the more you draw of it the worse the situation becomes so you, you it's like you shuffle mines in both players decks and whoever draws the mines first gets wrecked 
But yeah, this is this is ridiculous. Um, because it's a pixie that sometimes wins you the game. <laughs> so in the right deck, it's an absolutely insane card. In most decks, it's a good card. So those cards are always great. Water boy, your hero power this turn costs zero. Blah, 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 blah. We've had cards kind of like this, right? I don't think we like them that much. Don't think we're a huge fan of this. Unless the meta is really fast. The faster the meta becomes, the more this becomes relevant. But I don't think we I don't think we're too impressed so far. Alright, next one. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, we all know that this is a, a nasty one, right? Now, in Arena, it's a bit conditional. You need to have the beasts for it. If you do, it's pretty nasty. How good would a straight up zero mana two on be? Pretty good, but it's not, right? You have to hero power. It's conditional. It might be. It might be a lot better than. Uh, it might be a lot better than I give it credit for. Right now, it doesn't really feel insane. Do I hear purring? Yes. Muffin has joined us. Belligerent Noom. Battle cry. If your opponent has two or more minions, gain one attack. Pretty good, I guess. Oh, Muffin. Huh? Can't leave you alone with any food, huh? All right, let me put this bowl away before she goes. Finishes it. Okay. One second, guys. All right, back to reviewing, baby. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Pretty good. Because the um, the two four in Warlock is really nice, and this is gonna go off fairly often. So I don't think it's a uh, premium. But I think it's just good. <laughs> Sorry for that. I don't think it's that good. Have we already seen all the neutrals? Wait. Oh, yeah. I guess. No, we haven't. What the hell? Why did it jump to a warrior card? Okay, where were we? Alright, so we we were at Belligerent Gnome, right? Huh. How come it skipped past it? Weird. Alright, anyways. So, we did Belligerent Gnome. Ticket scalper. <laughs> so this is this is the card that people have been uh, pretty pretty afraid about. Yeah, this seems pretty nasty because this is gonna feel especially bad to play something into. This is going to um, like you play you play a four health minion against this. It trades one for one. And the opponent gets cards, so it's a, it's a three for one, kind of. It's only going to go off once in most cases, but that's more than enough. And then there are the rare cases where the health on this minion gets buffed and it's just over. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry for that. Oh yeah, the 3-8. The you can play the 3-8 next to this and keep going. So I think what this does is similar to what Fungal does, is... It becomes so important that you push for early game. So remember when we talked about the two mana, the two mana ping, right? We had him earlier here. I can scroll up and show you. Yeah, the ankle biter. Cards like this become a lot better when you need to just scramble for the boards and get it no matter what the cost is. Fungal is a card that does that, where if you have the board and you get the fungal two things and you get good trades, you're probably going to close it out from there. So from what I can see with the overkill mechanic and then Ticket Scalper as well, if Ticket Scalper is going to be common, then you're, you're going to get heavily rewarded for drafting a lower-ish curve and then taking advantage of the fact that you have initiative. Because even if you have smaller minions, having initiative means that your opponent's overkill won't trigger. Like, if you have a Bloodfen Raptor on the board and your opponent plays Ticket, ticket Scalper, you're like, whatever, dude. You just kill it. <laughs> so having smaller minions is fine as long as you have the initiative. <clears throat> All right. 
Sharkfin fan. After your hero attacks, summon a 1-1 one, one pirate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks pretty good. In rogue. <laughs> it's like in rogue. Okay-ish in druid, I guess. Mm, sorry. So, it's not thug level quality, but it's definitely an annoying little two mana card when you're playing as the rogue. Are you rating the cards for arena or in general? I'm rating them for arena, Sky. I think for for ranked it's it complete it requires a completely different approach because you're you're constantly thinking in terms of what kind of a deck this goes in and what kind of an archetype it's going to be. Uh, so it's a very different process than for arena. Hmm. Awkward cost and rogue, of course. That doesn't mean it's bad. You play this on turn four, right? And you dagger, you hit something, you get a one one. They can't kill it, you get another one one. So. It just creates another thing in Rogue that you kind of have to kill. All right, so we're done with the neutrals, right? Okay, that was actually pretty okay. That didn't take too long. Usually the neutrals is like this huge chunk that takes me super long. Yeah, that was like half an hour or so. That was digestible, it was good. So, class cards. So my, my overall impression from the, the first chunk that I've reviewed as what I said earlier, we're probably going to be rewarded for drafting um, more early curve, making sure we have initiative. This is probably not so good for Collins, right? Because Collins doesn't have initiative very often. He just kind of gets there and then wins by, by good play. But uh, a deck like, for instance, my Primal Fin Shaman that I really like to play, those kind of decks destroy Collins because it's just too early that you take advantage of the board. Where if you have more of these overkill things, that's just more of that early just push and punishing you if your curve is too heavy. Because a heavier curve usually comes at the cost of initiative. But we'll see. It's still arena and running out of threats is a real thing. So. I'll probably start off drafting really light and then build it up from there. This is what I love, right? If you guys want to see my testing process, right? I will be here. Uh, it, it launches on Tuesday, right? Or when is it again? It's going to be so much fun to really pick everything apart. I'll probably be able to do Tuesday for a couple hours before I go to bed, depending on when it releases. So Tuesday, Wednesday is where we will be uh, spending a lot of time uh it's wednesday i thought it was tuesday it's the fourth right ah, whatever what what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drafting uh at the start my results are usually pretty bad but that's because i'm not really trying to win i'm trying to learn as fast as possible so i can teach you guys as well how to uh gain an advantage right over the competition so i essentially invest my gold which i win back afterwards anyway because i learn and i get better um, so you guys can reap the benefits along with me. What I usually do is I, I draft opposites end of the spectrum and you instantly get a feel for, oh yeah, it's this direction. So you can go for an ultra greedy, slower deck. You can go for a reactive deck. You can go for balls to the walls curve. You can go for mid range. So what I like to do at the start is I like to draft, uh, a very pronounced archetype. You know, I'll sometimes even just skip past good cards. I'll skip like past two Primordial Drakes because I'm like, well, I don't need to learn that Primordial Drake is a good card. <laughs> and if I win games because of Primordial Drake, I've learned not so much. <laughs> so I'll probably just skip past good cards to just make a very defined archetype and then say like, oh, this archetype feels good. All right, anyways, we're going to start with the, uh, we're going to start with the Druid section. Pounds, give your hero plus two attack this turn, zero mana. Claw was one mana, and Claw was playable. This looks pretty good. Uh, you don't gain the armor, but you don't really care, uh, especially in a meta as fast as this. So it's not quite backstab level, because backstab doesn't tie up your hero power. You don't take any recoil. You can get past taunts. You can throw this on damaged minions, though. It's not all bad. But backstab is a really good card, especially in a fast meta. In a slow meta, backstab isn't that good because you run out of cards too fast. 
but in the meta where early board control is what it's all about, this is a good card. So we like pounds for sure. Tree speaker, five and a four four. Transform your trends into ancients. This is completely dependent on if they get trend support or anything like that. Uh, it doesn't really feel like it's going to be too relevant. And sometimes you're going to get cheesed by some guy with landscaping. <laughs> uh, yeah, so very, very niche deck dependent. Probably probably not so good on average, but when someone pulls it off, you're going to be baby raging. <clears throat> All right, four mana. Choose one. Give a minion plus two plus four and taunt or summon two, three, two raptors. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, that is good. Yeah, flexibility is really good in Arena. So it's not quite Blessing of Kings, but it's two bells on turn four. And two bells on turn four is very acceptable if you just need it to trade up. And then if you don't want two bells on turn four, you just summon two three twos. That's a good card. Good. Very nice. It's still two cards worse, more expensive. No, 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 no. What I mean that's profit is he plays landscaping on three, Senjin on four, and then on five he turns his turns into five fives, and you're like, Bleh. not just in one turn. All right. Next one. Gonk the Raptor. After your hero attacks and kills a minion, it may attack again. Uh, this is probably fun to clear a Violet Worm with. Like you go Pounce and Gonk, and then you just kill the Violet Worm, and then you kill all the one ones like... Tuck, 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 tuck. Um, in Arena, once again, probably not too relevant. It's just going to be fun sometimes with... Um, there's going to be there's gonna be someone that pulls off like Claw plus Pounce, on turn eight with this thing and then four damage or they're gonna play this you're not gonna be able to kill it and then they're gonna bite and they're gonna like tuck, 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 tuck. so yeah looks fun and the stats are fine seven four nine beast you'll take that that's your mongar with one less damage but a pretty significant upside so yeah seems very pickable not like insane but Seems super pickable. In arena, you're just always in arena. You're always concerned that the uh, the stats are fine, and then you go from there. Who may attack again? Your hero, uh, as, you know. Here, it says after your hero attacks and kills a minion, it may attack again. So, War Druid Lodi transform into one of Lodi's four dinosaur forms, which we don't see here, but I will just look them up for you. Uh, I've seen them at some point. Oh, okay. Well, you guys can see them here, right? Let me move it a bit. <sighs> Come on. All right. So the first one is a three mana, one six. Okay. So first of all, anytime you have this much choice and this much, this much flexibility, you are, um, you're probably going to be pretty happy with the, uh, you're probably going to be pretty happy with the card because even though the in the, because when you look at these cards a lot of them are like ha ah, you know like you can make the point that ah the one six taunt it's not quite as good as the one six that grows the one four spell power eh, it's a dollar on mage that's not so good three mana one two poison stealth okay it's wasp you can't really make an argument that that's bad so wasp is okay and then you have the 4-2 rush, that's the Saber, Druid, whatever, that's okay-ish. But having the choice of any of these at any point is really good. Because you happen to have a swipe, the spell damage is nuts. You play this into a big minion, the poison's pretty good. He's about to kill you, playing a taunt might be okay. Uh, your opponent has three one ones on the board. A one six is suddenly fine. Your opponent has uh, uh, the pirates, the overkill guy. Rushing it down and killing it is really good. So just having the choice between all these forms 
is really nice. Uh, it just increases the chance that you have a proper answer for what the what the board state demands. So yeah, pretty nice. This is going to be awkward when you pull it out with a guild recruiter. <laughs> You're like, my loadie. I'm currently reviewing the uh, the set Try Hard Poker, but I'm also not. I also haven't really played as much constructed. So, but after the set review, if you're still around, feel free to ask that again. Okay, Stampeding Roar. Summon a random beast from your hand and give it rush. In arena, I don't think we like this. It's uh, you essentially two for one yourself because the roar doesn't do anything aside from just slightly accelerating maybe your curve. So I think in most cases we don't love this. There are obviously ex you know, ex exceptions where you get a violet worm and then you, you sack it, you get the roar, blah, 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 blah. But I think on average, it's probably not a very, uh, it's probably not a very safe card to draft. Not to mention it doesn't do anything if you don't have a beast in your hand. So these conditional cards are always things we want to stay away from. Unless your deck just happens to, you know, have five violet worms. And even then, sometimes the loss of the card is just going to offset you too much. Spirit of the Raptor. All oh, right, the spirits for every class. Stealth for one turn, as they always, all they all have that. They're, they're zero threes, or I think they're all zero threes, and they have stealth for one turn, so you can set up. After your hero attacks and kills a minion, draw a card. So you can play this, attack something, kill it, draw a card, then it's stealth, they can't kill it. And then next turn, they can't play anything that you can kill, or you can draw another card. Mm, doesn't feel insane from, the, it's, once again, it's all bracket dependent. Ever since the brackets, the buckets were introduced in the arena system, like a quick, quick reminder for anyone who's like, what is this? Right now, cards are being offered in groups. I think seven groups or so, ranging from the creme de la creme, the best cards, like uh, Ultimate Infestation, next to Swipe, next to, I think, in the Ancient of War or something like that. So the best, uh, the best of the best. And then at the bottom, you have like the Wisp versus the Alarma bot and blah, 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 blah. So depending on where the cards get placed, things become very pickable or not very pickable at all. And at the start of an expansion, that is usually where the most chaos is because Blizzard has no data. So they usually sort the cards based on, oh, this card has a really high win rate. Let's put it in the highest bucket. This card has a really low win rate. Or... This card almost never gets picked. Let's move it up a bit. This card gets picked too much. Let's, you know, <clears throat> that's how they do that. But at the start, they have no data. So they need to say, mm, it's probably going to be in this bucket. It's probably going to be in that bucket. And at least for some cards, they're going to be terribly wrong, which is not their fault. It's really hard to predict these things. Okay. Um, it depends on how fast they patch it. But at the start, there is going to be this little imbalance where you will have to pick certain cards because they're just that much better than their counter pick than their counterparts and there's going to be some cards that you just absolutely can't pick because they're that much worse than their counterparts that happened at the start of witchwood a lot of the witchwood cards were under bucketed were over bucketed which meant that you would have a average card next to a premium card and you just couldn't pick it because it wouldn't make sense we're talking like a, an average four drop versus a vine cleaver or something. You're like, eh, why would I ever pick the average four drop? Okay, so with that in mind, everything I say here is entirely dependent on how the cards are bracketed. <clears throat> but yeah, this this doesn't feel like something I really want to go out of my way to draft. <sighs> Draw a beast from your deck, double its health. So four mana, do nothing on my board. I think in a very tempo-oriented meta, it's probably not good enough. Excuse me. I think that's um, I think that's the the first thing that comes to mind in a very tempo-oriented meta, which I think it's going to be because um, you're going to be so rewarded for initiative with overkill. 
doesn't feel worth it. Now this, this is the card I couldn't get around because people are freaking out about this. And you should absolutely freak out about this. This is not okay. <laughs> this is not okay, okay? War Golem is upset, disgusted, just flabbergasted. War Golem wants to have a word with Blizzard because this is not okay. <laughs> This is not okay. Eh? So this is a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven with Ultra Taunt. Like more Taunt than Taunt. Because Taunt, you just can't attack the face or any other minions. You don't actually have to attack into the Taunt. You have to attack this. Like this needs to go down. If this doesn't go down, it's bad news. Uh, especially if it gets Death Speakered. Especially if it gets healed afterwards. This card needs to be in the, the, the highest possible bucket. This needs to be next to UI, I think. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe it needs to be one tier lower. But I would rather have it next to UI because I don't want to see it all the time. So, yeah, definitely I want this in the highest bucket to start off with. And then maybe if we overreact it, we take it down a notch, but I want this to start in the very highest bucket. If anyone is watching, <laughs> if, if anyone from Blizzard is watching, please put this right next to UI. All right, so it's, um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's a war golem with an insane upside if you get to kill anything. So yeah. Moving on, I mean, not much more to be said about that, right? It's just insane upside if you get to kill something with it. And, and that's just assuming you get one kill. Imagine you get two kills. Because I, it doesn't need to survive in order for the overkill to trigger. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it needs to. So this could go off twice if it's behind Taunt, which is, you know? All right, next one. Two mana, two, three. So once again, by, by definition, River Croc, which is okay. River Croc is okay. Battle cry deal damage to an enemy minion equal to your hero's attack. Upside makes four. Good card. That's really the formula you go with with Arena. You look at the card stats. Is it equal or better to what to be expected, which is River Croc on two? Does it have upside? If yes, good card. <laughs> so once again, bucket dependent, but definitely good card. <clears throat> All right, and then we're done. So Pounce and Savage Striker, pretty fun uh, combo. So yeah, when we look at Druids, between Pounce, the good two drop, the insane, uh, the insane War Golem. What else do we have? Mark of Loa, also definitely a good card. Uh, Druid looks uh, pretty happy with this, for sure. So we'll see how Druid holds up. Whether it goes, you know, rank one, rank two, really depends on uh, the bucketing system and what the other classes are getting. But it could it could very well be that we've reviewed the best arena class just now, but we'll see. All right, moving on, Hunter, Halazi the Lynx, five mana three two, battle cry, fill your hand with one one lynxes that have rush. So it's a legendary, so once again, doesn't have that much relevance to Arena, but it's a beast, so you can get it from uh, your Macaw and stuff. This feels very playable in Arena. You you get you get punished for the um, for the for the stat loss, but Cultmaster synergy, the the Mech Chip synergy, Direwolf, um, just lots of lots of potential for this. So. I think you um I think you don't mind picking this once again it's it's gonna be bucket dependent. But in arena in arena lots of uh lots of room for cards like this because the gameplay is tech is is uh usually a little slower. <clears throat> uh, summon. So not play, summon. So it works with unleash the hounds. Ooh. Okay, so with Hounds, I think it's still a little bit too conditional. 
Stealth for one turn, whenever you summon a beast, give it plus one, plus one. Feels a little bit too conditional, but pretty good with Unleash the Hounds. Yeah, I think in Arena, once again, you just want good standalone cards. So not entirely sure. Maybe with a couple Unleashes. All right. Headhunter's Hatchet, Battlecry. If you control a beast, gain plus one durability. It's playable without the durability. It's good with the durability. This is like Argent Lance, a, a weapon Paladin used to have. It was Joust. Um, so you have more control over this than the Joust, but you're probably going to proc it less often than Joust because if you play it on turn two, it's unlikely you're gonna have a beast down. But still, uh, small weapons in a, in a very tempo-oriented meta are pretty good. So we like it. Good for Hunter. Give a friendly beast plus one plus one, then it attacks a random enemy minion. Why? I don't see the point. Why is this a card? I mean, we have Bestial Wrath, which is not good and is way better than this shit. It's an additional attack? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Man, that is not worded there at all. Like this is this is very poorly worded, right? How is this how am I supposed to as the player realize that I have wind fury on my friend? It doesn't it doesn't tell my guy it has wind fury. Right? Okay, anyways. Uh still don't like it, I think. I'll see. I'll see. Zildjian, we're not gonna get because it's a hero, unfortunately. Would be fun. <laughs> Uh, I say unfortunately, but still, Death Knights in Arena is not a good thing, but uh, I've, I've been enjoying drafting some meme decks a bit more, so sometimes I wish we could get Death Knights, but it's better for the game that we can't. All right. <clears throat> Blood Scalp Strategist. Battlecry. If you have a weapon equipped, discover a spell. That is acceptable for sure. Especially in a meta where, because this is this is another thing, a 2-4 body in a slow meta is pretty bad. Because people are going to pick Frost Rider, people are going to skip past turn 2 and it's not going to do shit. But in a meta where you get super rewarded for pushing early, it's pretty good. You, um, you get to clean up Bloodfen Raptors with this thing and sometimes it's going to actually proc. So this would this would be a lot worse if it would be a slower meta because playing it early on curve would be awkward but playing it early on curve is probably going to be okay. I don't think we like this. No. This is more constructed for uh for a beast deck. This shouldn't go off in arena. Revenge of the Wild. Some of your beasts that died this turn. Oh boy. So, combo, but if you do have beasts, pretty nasty. Pretty sweet with Unleash. Pretty sweet if you can trade off two beasts in one round. Basilisk. Basilisk being respawned. Pretty good. Pretty good. We'll need to, we'll need to play it to see just how good, but first, first look at it is uh, pretty good. Baited Arrow. I love the artwork with the stake. Deal 3 damage, overkill, summon a 5-5 five, five little star. Seems very good. Because you have an option to use it on uh, targets that really need to go down, but on average you should be getting your Devil Sar, and it's just a 5-5 five, five with upside, and it can go face. So if your opponent's on 2 health, you kill him and make a Dinosaur which is really nice. <laughs> but yeah, looks like a good card. Jebated arrow, yeah. Oh man, they should have put like the jebated face on here. Has anyone photoshopped that yet? Just like the jebated face on here and then the arrow just flies through and he's like, <laughs> All right, good, good, good. I really like that it can go face. Any type of hunter damage that can go face is nice. Spring Paw, 1 mana 1 1, Rush, Battlecry, add a 1 1 links with Rush to your hand. 
So comparable to um, the, uh, no, no, not quite because this can attack straight away. Huh. It's a beast. The fact that it's a beast, I think we like this card. Maybe not insane, but I think we like it. It sets up with Hyena. It sets up the um, Revenge of the Wild a bit better. What else do we have? It sets up your Hatchet. We like it. We like it. Okay, so we're around. So, Hunter definitely not as insane as Druid, but definitely some good cards coming out. In short, we have the uh, Hatchet, the Baited Arrow, Revenge of the Wild, Spring Paw, and then Strategist. Okay ish. So, pretty cool. Mage. Deal four damage to a minion, costs one if you've played an elemental last turn. It's removal in arena, pickable, pretty darn insane if you played an elemental. So I think the baseline of this card is average. And then if you have an elemental, it's kind of nuts. So for a certain elemental decks, it's going to be OP. -OP. <coughs> Sorry, guys. A little bit more of the reflux problem. Wing Blast, but harder to trigger. Yeah, but Wing Blast is a really, really good card, right? <clears throat> Splitting Image, Secret. When one of your minions is attacked, summon a copy of it. Ugh. Why? Why, game? Why? I don't want these cards to be printed, man. Secrets are already annoying enough. Bleh. You know? Bleh. This card can be insane. It can do it can do close to nothing, but can it can also just give you another bone merit thing or whatever. I don't mind the card as standalone. I mind that it's in the secret pool, so you need to play around it as well. And certain this is this is gonna it's like duplicate or effigy in the sense that if your opponent can engineer a board where you have to attack the taunt, ooh, really, anno really annoying. All right. The next elemental you play this turn costs two less. Moving on. <laughs> Arcanosaur, I mean, this needs to be on a body, right? And then maybe, depending on how the body is that, it's a, it's a spell, so. Six mana, three, three. If you've played an elemental last turn, deal three damage to all other minions. I like it because it's not bullshit like Dustbreaker. You have a little bit of a heads up. It's six mana, not four mana. I like it. I like it because it's not bullshit. <laughs> it's fair in that you have a heads up and it's not you know, like insane. So it's still going to be playable in certain uh, in certain decks. And you do need to fear it if your opponent has played, uh, if your opponent has played Elemental. But I really like that they go to the if you have played rather than if you have it in your hand. Although they're doing the reverse thing with the dragon guy. The 7-4 dragon goes off if you have the dragon in your hand. I wish they would do it more but if you have played one, because then your opponent can at least anticipate it. Blast Wave. Deal two damage to all minions. Overkill, add a random mage spell to your hand. So Volcanic Potion for two mana more, but if I kill a one health minion, I get an additional spell in my hand. I think it's probably going to be okay by definition, because we are going to probably draft fairly low curvy decks. I'm a <laughs> Kaka poopy. <laughs> Thank you for the sub, man. Welcome. Uh, this is um. This is probably going to be okay because we're probably going to have those one h these these one hp minions. 
For every minion you overkill? No. I don't think so, right? You get a spell for each over... Wait, are you kidding me? What? <laughs> uh, Blizzard, why? Okay. Yeah, this is insane. This is insane. What the fuck? Maybe not in Constructed, but in Arena. Like, holy... Because I, I think the meta is going to force you to play into this. And you can set it up. You can you can have you can make a trade with a minion, put your minion and their minion on one HP, then play this, and right. So you can you can and you can probably engineer boards where, you know, the worst you're gonna get. Well, I mean, obviously the worst you're gonna get is zero, and that's going to happen, and you're probably gonna be fine with that sometimes when you clear a living mana or whatnot. It's late game, you've played a five mana volcanic, who cares, you've cleared your board. But I think in most scenarios, you're gonna get like three, like two to four, which is, whew. Obviously spell power makes it like, you know, a tier beyond bullshit, but that's not very common. So I'm not like super worried about that. It's gonna happen and it's gonna be dirty. But yeah, I'm, I'm worried about how good it is on average. And it looks like it's going to be pretty good on average. Dynam. Suddenly, I don't mind the big dinosaurs just so you can kill mages with it, right? <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Well, moving on. I mean, the fact that this goes off for every individual kill is just mind boggling. It feels like you can't like... I hope I'm wrong and it's actually not that good, but I, I don't see how this card is not that good. All right, moving on. The Daring Fire Eater. Your next hero power this turn deals two more damage. Okay, so that means that you're dealing three for three. So Roaring Torch-esque, kind of, where it doesn't shuffle the big thing in your deck, but you get a 1-1. One, one. Okay, I guess. You kill an injured blade master with this thing, you're pretty happy with that. Oh, Forgotten Torch, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I don't think it's blatantly OP or anything like that. Probably just okay to good. Spirit of the Dragonhawk. Your hero power also targets adjacent minions. Hmm. Potential, right? But I don't think the spirits I don't think the spirits are that good in arena. Man with a red beard, thank you for the 70 D viewer host, my friend. How was the stream? Hope you had a good one. Shady forgot about the forgotten card. Crazy. Yeah, I think the spirits are gonna be a bit too conditional, but this one can definitely have its turn where it's annoying. Yeah. If your hero power has dealt 8 damage this game, summon Ragnaros the Fire Lord. This will be fun. <laughs> I want to see um, I want to see this being played. This will be fun. Hex Lord Malakras, 8 mana 5-5. Five, five. Add a copy to your opening hand. Add a, add a copy of your opening hand to your hand except this card. Okay, so... That's before you draw. So that's three if you're player one, four if you're player two. Eight mana, five, five, draw three cards. It's gonna be cheap ish cards though. Uh, that's nice, Redbeard. Hope you're enjoying the whiskey, man. Yeah. I think we take it, right? Yeah. Eight mana, five, five, draw three or four, based on whether we're player one or player two. It'll depend on the bucket. Yeah. Not if you mulligan for your big stuff, yeah. What? Dude, what is up with these things? Wow, they are printing some ridiculous spider tanks, this expansion, dude. I can tell you one thing. Three threes are gonna suck so hard. <laughs> you do not want three threes in your deck. No, sir. But, man, 
This is this is so good. Spider tanks with situational upsides are already really good. This isn't really situational at all. Mage hero powers kill things. I'm, I'm, I'm flipping it off. I don't know why. It's unconsciously flipping it off. I'm like, why is my finger like this? <laughs> uh, damn. Okay. Wow. Yeah, not much more to say than wow. <sighs> yeah, insane. I rate this card as bananas. It is quite bananas. And then we're through, right? Yeah. Damn, dude, we are getting some crazy cards. So Blast Wave, Pyromaniac. Splitting Image kind of as well, right? Yeah. To a lesser extent. Yeah, insane. So, so far, we've had some pretty good stuff in the first three. Druid and Mage, the more insane cards, though. One mana, two, two weapon. That's good. Battlecry, deal five to your hero. That's less good. <laughs> I still think we don't hate it, especially in how fast the meta is going to go. I think they're they're really pushing, um, they're pushing healing. They're pushing healing in Pally. So you're probably going to get some random healing to help out with this. But yeah, in a very tempo oriented meta, looks very playable. Restore 4 health, draw a card. Well, it's way better than Holy Light. Let's start there. It's way better than Holy Light. I don't think we love it, though. I think it's it's going to depend on the bucket. And you'll pick it just to cycle, and it's okay. It's way worse It's way worse than Bubblies, because Bubblies has a body on it. Can it target minions? Yes. Because it doesn't say Restore 4 health to your hero. So, playable but not good. Faraki Battle Axe, Overkill, give a minion in your hand, plus two, plus two. <laughs> I really, it's it's really weird. What, well, it's maybe not weird, but what, what they're doing is they're creating this huge upside for you to have initiative, for you to push on the board, which is gonna create this need to draft small cards to make sure you have initiative. If you have initiative, that also means you're probably going to have these weaker minions. So then it's like they're, they're, I mean, maybe this is not by design, but it feels like they're forcing you to play into overkill in order to be able to use your own overkill. <laughs> All right. But yeah, this looks playable. What do you get for five mana? For five mana, you get a Reaper. Used to get Fool's Bane, which is pretty good. Yeah. I don't think it's like insane, but I think it's playable. It's a legendary, so it doesn't really matter. The effect is probably also not that relevant in Arena, but it's a spider tank. So depending on the bucket, you'll take it. Assassin's Blade, lol. Yeah. Uh, Fool's Bane is back. It doesn't attack, right? No. Or did, oh, yeah, 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 we got a Fool's Bane. I think I saw that card on Twitter as well. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> if you've restored 10 health this game, gain plus 4, plus 4 and taunt. Probably not too relevant in Arena either, but yeah. It's a 4 mana 4 4, which makes it okay ish. Definitely not as good as a 3 5. <sighs> Sorry. <clears throat> All right. Next. After you cast a spell, summon a tiger with equal to its costs. Four mana for a zero three stealth. Once again, probably a little bit too conditional, too much setup required. This looks good. So let's look at some six mana cards. Boulder Fist with Divine Shield and Taunt. Obviously, Boulder Fist is one of the better hits. Uh, you can you can get better than Boulder Fist, of course. You can also low roll, but what we've seen with Discover is that because you get three targets every time, the chance that you truly, truly low roll all three of them is pretty darn low. Whereas the chance, because all you need is one good one. One bad one, you don't care. There's two other options. Two bad ones, you don't care. There's your third option. 
you only need one good one. So this is discover is kind of you stack the deck because you're way more likely to get a good outcome than you having to go with a bad outcome. So yeah, pretty good card for sure. I think we are going to see this. You can get Tarim out of there. Yeah, uh, you don't care. <clears throat> I'm here for you, Shady. The chance for an okay plus outcome is 85%. Yep. So my gut feeling was like 84.5%, but thank you for uh, confirming with the math, Stein. Definitely like to uh, <laughs> definitely like to have the numbers. Time out. Your hero is immune until your next turn. Doesn't feel like an arena card. I'll probably lose to this at some point and be annoyed at my opponent for drafting it. Immortal Prelate. Death Rattle, shuffle this into your deck. It keeps all the enchantments. Urgh. Doesn't feel like an arena card. Seems a bit too conditional, too much setup, two mana, one, three, etc., etc. Shervala the Tiger. Divine Shield, Rush, Lifesteal. Costs one less for each mana you've spent on spells. Once again, doesn't really feel like a constructed card. You can go, you can go games without spend without spending more than five mana on spells with Pally. So don't think we care for this one. It's more a constructed theme thing, team thing, theme thing. Oh man! All right, so Paladin, I think is the first class where I'm like, eh, eh, you know, new challenger, very good card, but Mage had me freaking out, Druid had me freaking out. Hunter had some just solid stuff, really solid stuff. So Paladin first class where I'm like, eh, you know, whatever. Some playable stuff. <clears throat> All right, Priest. So once again, the vanilla test, two mana, three, two. We like those. And the effect is very, very relevant. So good card, very good card. Restore three health. Zero mana. No, we don't like. I don't think it's worth it. Mass hysteria. Oh boy. So priest is always gonna have a way back on the board. Force each minion to attack another random minion. So what happens is, let's say I have two ultra stars on the board which is a very common scenario, as we all know, will Monkasar A attack Monkasar B, and then afterwards, after they both survived, Monkasar B will then also attack Monkasar A. That's, uh, that's interesting, right? Now, a lot of cards won't really survive the initial combat, but if they do, like let's say your 2-2 attacks your 4-4 four, four first, then your 4-2 still has to attack something else. Ugh. This feels annoying. Because I'm not sure how reliable it is as a clear, but it will definitely clear, or at least do so much work on the board in, in certain situations. Yeah, cards like these are annoying. Because as a good player, I'm not sure how highly you're going to pick it because it's so random. But it's going to be played against you and it's going to work in certain situations. So then, yeah, we'll see. I need to see, uh, I need to see how, um, how much variance it is. It feels like there's so much variance on the cards, but I need to see how, uh, how it does. Whenever you cast a spell, summon a 1-1 one -one zombie with taunt. So normally this would be okay, but because there are so many insane spider tanks in the format, you probably want to stay far away from three threes. So also summoning one once in an overkill meta is probably not that great. <clears throat> Seance, choose a minion, add a copy of it to your hand. Seems too slow in the uh, tempo oriented meta we're gonna have. Princess Talanji, summon all minions from your hand that didn't start in your deck. Probably not too relevant in Arena either. 
Grave Horror costs one less for each spell you've cast this game. So we've seen this with Arcane Giant, and Arcane Giant was not uh, was not a good card unless your deck was very specifically tailored to it. I don't think that in the current, I don't think that in the current meta this is uh, this is very good. I don't think we cast enough spells. Battlecry, draw one cost minions from your deck until your hand is full. This is a combo thing, right? Once again, not so good in arena. Yeah, so this is the combo, like. We don't care. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't have a clever line that incorporates 15 for this reset announcement. Thank you, Deathfuller, for the 15. Welcome back. Welcome back. Surrender to Madness. Destroy three of your mana crystals. Give all minions in your deck plus two plus two. Seems too slow. Because you're, you're obviously not going to do this on turn three. So this is something you're going to want to do. Like turn seven or eight at the earliest. Yeah, just shooting your uh, shooting yourself in the foot like this is just so monk ass. So, in recap for Priest, it's basically Mass Hysteria and the Phantasm. So, definitely also a bit underwhelming compared to the crazy stuff we've seen come out of Mage and Druid. It makes your one cost cards huge. Yeah, but it's that's constructed, right? It's constructed thing. It's not for Arena. All right, Rouge. Let's see what we get here. Discover a weapon from another class. Two mana. Silver Sword. Could be good in the late game for sure. Fine Cleaver. Super Collider. A little less in Rogue. Don't have that Warrior Hero power. Now, I have seen people say that you can get Twig out of this. And it's kind of dumb. It's true. But you're not going to cast this on turn two. So you're not going to twig on curve. Hmm. Overall, it doesn't feel insane. Stone and steel. But we'll see. Dragon soul, poggers. Serrated tooth. Death rattle. Give your minions rush. So anytime you get a one damage rogue uh, weapon, it needs to be insane for you to kind of justify putting it into your deck over daggering. And I don't think this is insane enough. Uh, because you can break this with your hero power, but then you're playing something. It's like it's like really shitty rocket boots, right? <laughs> so I don't think we care for Serrated Tooth. Gain plus one, plus one for each other pirate you control. Bleh. Doesn't feel like an arena card. Gurubashi Hypemon. Discover a 1-1 one, one copy of a battle cry minion. It costs one. So this is a 7 mana 5, 7, which is um, acceptable. Not, not premium or anything, but acceptable. It has the 7 health and the damage is high enough for it to be relevant. So I think we're okay with this for sure. Uh, what are certain like really nice battle cries? Obviously we can get the legendaries. We can get Alex, we can get Deathwing. Oh god. That's that's the first week of Trollden, right? 1-1 one, one Deathwing's out of this shit. Okay, so good card. Feels like a good card for sure. Captain Hook Tusk. Battle Cry. Summon three pirates from your deck. Give them rush. Not an arena card. Walk the plank. Destroy an undamaged minion. Definitely an arena card. Absolutely an arena card. Your opponent plays the 7 7 overkill dinosaur. Emotes you. You emote, you emote them back and make him walk the plank. So. Having this in an ant, having this in this particular meta, it's definitely gonna feel good because it's gonna be a lifesaver versus certain overkill situations. <coughs> Falspine is not a battle cry. Black Knight is though. Yeah. MCT, oh my god, yeah. Grawl, battle cry, eat a minion in your <laughs> Don't know why I'm yawning so much. Battle cry, eat a minion in your deck, gain its stats. Death rattle, add it to your hands. Five mana two two. I don't know how big the average minion is, but it's probably not that big if we're curving low. It needs to be a three three for it to be worth it, kind of, right? I wanna say it's not that insane, but it could um, it could definitely work. 
I want to say it's not that great at face value. Oh, but Growl out of Hypemon is for sure. Discover a 1 1 Growl. Yep, for sure. Raiding Party. Draw two pirates from your deck, combo, and a weapon. Okay. Once again, not really arena material, but Pirate Rogue in Constructed. It'd be funny if they make it. Deal three damage to a random enemy. Repeat for each of your pirates. So, once again, not really arena card. Stealth for one turn, your minions, battle cries, and combos trigger twice. This is like Bran. And we know that Bran could do some busted stuff. And it has stealth, so set up. I think this is the first spirit where I'm like, huh, maybe. All the other spirits. Um, all the other spirits seem like a little bit too slow and stuff, but this this might actually work. We'll see. It's probably by default not going to be insane just because it's arena and a lot of it is just minions and setup and not setup, just minions and tempo. Was Bran good in arena? Yeah. I mean, it's a 3 mana 2 4, but this, um, this is going to be worse than Bran, but it's going to be easier to pull it off. <clears throat> okay. Wart Bringer. Right. Battle Cry. If you play two spells this turn, deal two damage. Excuse me. So, unlikely that you're gonna play two spells, but it's a one mana two one, probably in a faster meta, so it's playable. Return all spells you played last turn to your hand. Uh, unstable evolution comes to mind, right? <laughs> so, it's a six mana four six, kind of playable. You don't play it for the body mainly, of course. I think on average it's going to be decent because you um, you return one spell with this and it's worth, right? So seems like a very draftable card. The Box Slosher. Battlecry, return a friendly minion to your hand and give it plus two, plus two. Playable. I can see this pulling something away that's about to get overkilled. That's going to be pretty funny. Yep, pretty cool. Better than a regular panda, for sure. Probably going to be pretty good. The Big Bad Voodoo. Give a friendly minion death rattle. Summon a random minion that costs one more. So we had Ancestral Spirit, or we have Ancestral Spirit, and that card is playable. This is a less reliable Ancestral Spirit. Sometimes an upgrade, sometimes a downgrade. Hmm. You said stay away from 3-3s, three make up your mind. Yeah, but it's a shaman card. I make exceptions for shaman cards. All right. <clears throat> yes, there's lots of spoder tanks. When you get a temporary UE back to your hand, it has to be played the same turn you get it. I think on Reddit it's been confirmed that you will get all the UEs in your hand. Uh, I don't know about this one, man. I think I like it less than Ancestral Spirit because it's... Ancestral Spirit you do on like the the five one that respawns like good death rattles, so I don't think we love this. Whenever you cast a spell, draw a card from your deck, it costs one more. Eh. Oh, that costs one more, huh? That's kind of funny. No, I don't think we like this. Not for arena. It's a better divine shield. Yeah, but you wouldn't want to pay two mana for hand of protection. Also, it's not guaranteed a better divine shield, it's random. One mana deal two. I think we're pretty happy with that. If the meta is going to be pretty fast. Oh, I love the artwork of this. Look at that. The Murloc's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Bonk. I haven't even seen that, man, that the totem's about to like come in hot. Haunting Visions. The next spell you cast this turn costs three less. Discover a spell. So it's not Glyph, because it doesn't keep the discount. If it would keep the discount, it would be pretty darn good. Without the discount, I'm not sure. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think we love it. Not being able to keep the discount. You could try for Bloodlust on the turn where it's good, but there's just a lot of spells out there, man. 
Oh, you can get Haunting Visions into Haunting Visions. But no, it's the next spell, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't do anything. You can use a discount on another spell this turn. That's true. But then you need to already have two spells in your hand. Uh, Lick'em has plus two attack while you have overloaded mana crystals. I mean, a cheap weapon. It's probably playable if the meta is going to be pretty fast. Doesn't feel insane. Not like Spirit Claw with the totem. Spirit Claw was also one mana, so yeah. Pickable, I'd say. Not good, but pickable. Yeah, th this guy's pretty funny. Probably not insane in Arena, just because it's awkward, the body and the, the set. Like, you want good standalone cards. But definitely gonna do some funny stuff with this. With, uh, I guess, Unstable, with Hex, and all those things. Summon three, two, four taunts with Toads with taunt. I was gonna say taunts with taunts. Hmm? Overload three. So, nine mana to get a full Phantom Militia. In the overkill meta, two fours aren't really that good. I don't know about this one. I think I'm going to need to play this one and feel it out. It basically says zero mana, discover a spell. If you are committed to casting the spell this turn, that costs... Yeah, but you need to have two spells, uh, Tempedo, right? You can't just say, oh, if this happens, it's pretty good. I mean, the pirate cards, if you have the pirates, is also pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to need to play this one, see how it feels. Woo! All right, three more, baby. Blood Troll Sapper. After a friendly minion dies, deal two damage to the enemy hero. Seven mana, five, eight. Common. Wow, this is going to be picked fairly often, I would say. Only two more. Oh, only two more. In s yeah, right. We've already done neutrals. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Decent body. 5-8. And then an effect. We take it. Destroy a minion. Costs one less for each minion you control. Siphon 6 mana. So if you have two minions, it's a siphon without a heal. But it's removal in arena. You need one minion for it to be good? No. 7 mana siphon that doesn't heal me is not good. You need 3 minions for it to be good. But yeah, I don't hate it. It's removal, right? Removal in arena. Grim Rally. Destroy a friendly minion. Give your minions plus 1 plus 1. Mm. I think I need to see this on a body for me to want it. On a spell, it's just 2 monk ass. Two monk ass without it being on a body. Battle cry, add three random cards you discarded this game to your hand. It's a six mana six six. That's playable. And sometimes you get a card back. Maybe. Right? Definitely not an unpickable card. Taunt, battle cry, discard your lowest cost card. Three mana two six. Man, just compare anything to Tar Creeper and you're like, eh. I'll need, to, I'll need to experiment a bit with this card. Doesn't feel worth it right now, but we'll see. High Priestess, Jeklik. 4 mana 3, 4, Taunt Lifesteal. When you discard this, add two copies of it to your hand. <laughs> okay. Obviously in certain decks where you have the discard, it'll do more stuff, but in general, it has Lifesteal and Taunt for 4 mana. Probably not that great in Arena, but, well, maybe. Maybe we maybe we should say between okay and good, right? Yeah, probably around there. Because of the lifesteal. You can get it down, you can get it down on a turn where, because the 4-4 the four, four worm isn't great, but it's playable. And this is one mana less and has taunt, so. It's probably between okay and good. Discard your lowest cost card. Deal two damage to all minions. I don't know, actually. Need to play with this a bit more. The, the power of Soulfire is that you can do it and you can gain a lot of tempo on the board. And Soulfire is definitely decent. I need to play around with this. Feels like it has potential. 
Nope. So you're bored with copies of this minion? Not so sure. Also, you know, all the spirits have been like, eh. Okay. So for Warlock, we have the Shriek to look out for. We have the Sapper, we have the Demon Bolt, the Priestess. All right, last, the Warrior. So Warrior is in a really good spot right now. And the way how we're probably going to want to draft, Warrior's probably going to keep exploiting that. So we'll see what they get. <laughs> Excuse me. Devastate. Deal four damage to a damaged minion. That seems pretty good. For one mana. Yep. Playable, to say the least, right? Mm -hmm. Add two random dragons to your hand for two mana. Wow. No. Can someone do the math on how often they get Deathwing? Cards like these are frustrating for Arena, man. How often am I going to lose to a random Deathwing? Spirit of the Rhino. Your rush minions are immune to turn their summons. Okay, now this is one of the first ones that has a tempo element to it as well. 100%? It feels that way. I'll play around with this one. But, oh no, you need, yeah, never mind. You need to have a ton of rush minions for it to work. Never mind. That's definitely a playable card. Five mana, five, five, potential upside. Hmm. That's pretty insane if it actually lands. In Arena, a bit harder to make the synergy work though. But if you have rush minions in the deck, for sure. Very pickable if you have rush minions in your deck already. I think Warrior has enough good weapons that it probably doesn't need this. Also, the four durability on it means that it's hard to get rid of it when uh, you don't want to shoot your own minions the entire time. So I don't think we love this. 7.6% for Deathwing. Yeah. The totem is bad if you pick it. Devastating if your opponent has it. What? Which totem? Warmaster Voon, copy all dragons in your hand. Oh, legendary, understated. Probably someone's gonna pull that off against me with like two dragon roars. But in general, probably doesn't feel uh, that good. Small Thorn Lancer, battle cry. If you're holding a dragon, destroy a damaged enemy minion. <sighs> Man. People are, like, there's going to be Dragon Warriors out there. Yo, Execute on a stick. Damn, dude. These cards are so monk-ass because on average they're probably not that good. But it's just like, if you have the dragon, it's insane. Summon a random minion with cost equal to your armor up to 10. I don't know. This is one of those cards I need to play with. I don't know how often I'm gonna get a pile of armor. The The instinct is that the card isn't that great. It's too often that you just use your face. Maybe in certain decks. Soul Thrays, Overkill, you may attack again. Fool's Bane is back, baby. So Fool's Bane was five mana for three damage. This is six mana for four damage damage but you need to kill something in order to be able to attack again now full bane very often did kill with one hit but you would also often use it on um on one minion twice in order to get through a taunt and then uh kill the rest behind the line this has the upside that it can go face so you can like attack, like attack minion, attack minion, go face. You can do that. And then next turn, go face again or something. I would say that I probably would still prefer a Fool's Bane, but that doesn't mean that this card is bad by any means because Fool's Bane was amazing. Yep, yep. Okay. It's not because a card is not as good as... Well, maybe it is better than Fool's Bane, but my initial, my initial instinct is probably not as good as Fool's Bane because the limitation that I can't attack anything twice... It's quite a big one. It's probably a bigger limitation than not being able to go face with Fool's Bane. 
<clears throat> all right and there we have it guys that are all the cards so some takeaways is uh warrior with the dragon memes it's gonna be annoying druid feels sick with the uh the savage striker dire horn pounds if you're gonna play mark if you're gonna play for tempo mage just ridiculous with the blast wave and the pyromaniac kind of a uh, kind of weird hunter just some solid cards nothing crazy op but just some solid cards <clears throat> well maybe the uh maybe the revenge of the wild that that one might be op it depends a bit on how often you get to pull that off what the beast percentages are and then a whole lot of meh i think paladin was meh priest was meh rogue we got the hype mon we got walk the plank so some solid cards but a lot of pirate memes which is really gonna dilute the pool like raiding party cannon barrage hooked us howler eh you like whatever serrated tooth not so good stone and steel probably not so good so yeah rogue also kind of meh but rogue generally survives because rogue's just good hero power and if you know how to play rogue you can usually get by shaman also mainly meh nothing too like pock champ warlock also mainly meh so from the new cards druid mage warrior dependent on yeah yeah probably just warrior because the devastate is pretty good soul thrace is pretty good the drake is super fine the dragon roar will be nasty yeah i think that's it and then for neutrals there were a couple highlights if you missed that um <clears throat> former champ being a good card but the one one body may be a downside with overkill regenerating thug being a very very uh solid card just annoying on its own and you don't have to pay for it uh peddler being okay and nothing to like fancy lots of spider tanks so once again three threes are probably going to be a lot worse neutral one damage to everything something to play um uh, something to play around for sure uh, five mana for a three six is playable for sure it's a dragon so it's just gonna help trigger that dragon synergy and then yeah the one the one aoe is just uh very very useful mm, scavenger super fine right announcer gonna be a strong card the hellfighter because you can play it and then attack so you can do some crazy stuff with this uh a line cracker also very powerful card the ranger probably not like insanely powerful but just useful crowd roaster in the dragon decks is gonna be nuts taskmaster probably gonna be fun to give your opponent targets to overkill you can play this and then if they kill it they make an o3 and then you can play something and then kill the o3 or er, war bear solid card for sure beastmaster super solid spider tank with upside then the scalper as uh, pointed out nasty just nasty uh the gnome solid card okay and then like the fan the shark fin fan in uh in rogue also pretty good all right let me go over to chat guys see if you guys have any questions any last remarks so nearly eight percent to get a deathwing out of the double dragon card okay. you can overkill the face and attack again good play four hits against a sleepy sleepy dragon also the um the upside of fool's bane is that you could attack with a weapon then equip fool's bane and then attack again that's not the case with soul Thrace. so yeah i think that given all the uh, given all the arguments we probably still want fool's bane but as i mentioned earlier it's not because a card isn't fool's bane it's not a good card and what i did just now for the neutrals was not my review this was just a small recap for the neutral review should you guys have missed it but it'll go up on youtube as well it'll probably be up by tomorrow is the game going to suck less well i mean if you think it's it sucks right now probably not rip violet worm because of all the overkills well 
you'd have to kill the worm and then have your overkill on the board and then attack the 1-1. One, one. So your opponent does have a lot of say in the matter. I think in general, it's really going to be about who has control of the board, who is going to dictate the trades. Those overkills are going to work. Any remarks on cards leaving active play? Uh, not yet. It's only the next expansion, Talon. The next expansion is going to really, really shake up the meta. It's going to be a huge, going to be a huge shift. Any class tier changes? Well, that's always that's always a difficult one. Uh, from what I can see, we're going to have to play right into Warrior's hand. So, Warrior's probably still going to be pretty good. Druid, just because it got that silly card. It really depends on the buckets. If they don't place it in the top bucket, Druid's going to be pretty dirty. Um, Mage should, we're gonna have to play into Mage's hands as well. Probably the way how it goes, yeah. So Mage is probably gonna get a bit better from where it is right now. That was not a review, Monkaz. Do you think the new expansion will be more snowball -y? Yes. Yeah, class, t yeah, it, it's all pure speculation because we can hypothesize all we want on which class is gonna be good. In the end, it's all going to come down on where they place the cards in the buckets initially. The first two weeks is going to be entirely dependent on that. And then after that, they'll probably adjust it. We already have really snowbody cards. Yup, they're just piling on to that right now. Increasing the reason for you to be on the board and pushing. Yeah, I mean, it's there's no, there's no groundbreaking... Um, there's no groundbreaking news with the overkill. It's arena. If you are in control of the board in arena, you're going to have a good time and your opponent's not. That's kind of how arena is. Now, what I do want to say with the overkill deck is that right now, there is still some, uh, some wriggle room to outlast an opponent, even though they had some good early game. If your opponent gets a ticket scalper it's very hard to outlast them because they're gonna get like a free plus two cards it's always good if they have the dinosaur if they have the 510 so if they are if they are just pushing and snowballing it just it gives them more tools to go all in on the snowbally archetype rather than uh, having to hedge your bets a bit and pick more big minions yeah, what I do want to say is that because the because of how they're doing the offering bonus, right? They're not they're not giving the new set an offering bonus. It's not going to have as big of an impact as you might think. We're still going to see uh, an equal amount of the new cards, maybe even less than the previous set, if they are over bucketed, which Blizzard has done in the past, probably as a rather safe than sorry strategy over bucketing cards to make sure that you don't break the arena you probably make it a bit more boring because we're just not picking the new cards but it is it is probably a good strategy that blizzard uh, employs if you under bucket cards you might break the arena because suddenly everybody has like a lot of powerful stuff but if you over bucket the cards it just makes it so that the arena is kind of like it was before because you're not picking the new cards anyway Remember Nightprowler? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, Morgan A-bomb was always next to uh, UI and stuff. For sure, for sure. All righty then. All right, give me a moment, guys. Let me see what we're going to do now. Because I'm a little tired, so we'll see. We can either end the stream, we can try an arena, we can ask Collins to carry us. I can grab some tea. I can uh, can take a nap. <laughs> we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be streaming um, arena the entire weekend, of course. That's definitely gonna happen. And then Monday, we have our rest day, prepare for the expansion. And then once the expansion hits, we're gonna go pew 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 pew